I'm about to save you potentially hundreds of dollars on your next trip to Las Vegas. I'm Ellie Smalls and I have over 30 tips that are actually going to save you money in Vegas. And no, this doesn't involve playing apps like My Vegas Rewards. While you definitely can rack up some freebies playing those apps, they are so time consuming and I don't have time for that and neither do you. These are things that take no time or effort and can result in big savings over the cost of your entire trip. My first tip is do not pay the CNF tax. Always check your bill before paying whether you've had a full meal or just drinks. Some restaurants and bars in Vegas have added a CNF tax, which stands for concession and franchise fee. This is actually a discretionary tax that you don't have to pay. If you see this on the bottom of your bill, just ask your server to remove it and they will, no questions asked. Not every bar in Las Vegas does this, but we did notice it at a couple of places on the Las Vegas Strip, notably Beer Park and Alexa's at the Paris Hotel. Next, you should definitely take advantage of Yelp check-in offers. Download the Yelp app and when you check in at a restaurant that has one of these, you'll receive an offer on your phone that you can redeem on this visit or save it for another time. So for example, I have seen the Gordon Ramsay Pub and Grill offer free sticky toffee pudding. Nacho Daddy has an offer for a free house margarita and then other places offer 10% off of your bill. So these are always changing. So I highly recommend that you always check before you go out to eat. It also helps if you're trying to decide where you want to eat or drink next. Continuing with food, find the $5 breakfasts and lunches. In the Miracle Mile shops at Planet Hollywood, you'll find places like La Salsa Cantina that has breakfast for $4.99. And in the same mall, Ocean One Grill is another popular spot where breakfast is super cheap and all lunch items are $5. But I also really liked Flights, which is also in the same mall, and they have happy hour all day where you'll find three drinks for $10. The breakfast was reasonably priced and huge portions. And the best part about this place is breakfast is served till 2 p.m. and there's happy hour all day. Another way I like to save money in Vegas is to eat a really big breakfast and skip lunch. Hash House A Go Go is a really good spot for this because the portions are absolutely massive. And a few weeks before your trip, sign up for their email list and sometimes they do send promos or coupons. This next tip is about coffee. So if you have room in your luggage and you're someone who needs a big ass cup of coffee in the morning before you even get dressed, like me, then this is something that's gonna save you a lot of money over the course of your trip. Try and bring your own coffee maker. A lot of people bring a single cup Keurig and this way you can have all the coffee you want in the mornings. It'll save you between six and ten dollars for a cup of coffee and that's just drip coffee. For example, on my last Vegas trip we stayed at the Paris Hotel. I paid $13.50 every single morning for two cups of coffee. This is just drip coffee, nothing special. So over the five mornings that we were there, this was about $67 that we spent just on two coffees in in the morning to get us going. Not to mention, it's going to save you at least 25, 30 minutes between getting dressed, waiting for the elevators, and then waiting in line for coffee. Every time I went down for coffee, it was at least a 25 minute trip. So this is precious Vegas time that you don't wanna be spending in line. Moving on to drinks. On the Strip in Vegas, you can walk around with liquor as long as it's not in a glass cup or bottle. So this means you can mix your own drinks or you can buy cheap drinks at the CVS or the Walgreens. You can go in and out of the casinos with your own liquor. You don't have to buy from the casinos. The cheapest way to save money on drinks is to get them at Walgreens or CVS. That's why I like staying at the Paris because there's a CVS right next door. It was really convenient to save on drinks as well as the fact that it's center strip. So it did save a lot of walking and Uber rides as well. With that, if you like cold drinks, you should bring your own reusable plastic cup or tumbler. This way your drinks will stay super cold all day, even in the Vegas heat. And you can ask for ice refills at the bars. Just be polite and provide the bartenders a tip if they gave you free ice as well. And yes, you can take advantage of free drinks. Drinks are still free in Vegas while you're gambling on the casino floor. Whether you're playing penny slots or poker or any of the table games, gambling equals free drinks. I have a bit of a method and some tips to help you get free drinks faster and more of them when you're gambling. I wrote an entire blog post about it, including the best types of drinks that you can order 
check that out. The description is in the link below. I might do a video on it, but for now you can read the blog post and I've linked it in the description below. Moving on to saving money on hotels in Las Vegas. One of the best ways to save money is to book directly with the hotel. You'll get the best rate by booking direct and also as far in advance as you can. And after you've made your booking, go back and check the rates every single day. If you've noticed the rate has gone down, call the hotel and they will adjust the rate for you. Most hotels even have free cancellation up until a couple of days before checking in. So if you want, you can also just cancel your room and then rebook at the cheaper rate. Many hotels also have a best rate guarantee. Sometimes they will beat it by 10%. Another reason why it's good to book directly with the hotels is that sometimes there are additional perks. So for instance, right now at the time of filming this, MGM hotels are offering a food and beverage credit. So depending on the property, you could receive up to $75 daily as a food and beverage credit with your room. That being said, if you're Canadian like me, sometimes flight and hotel packages can be cheaper. So definitely don't give up on these deals. If you want to visit Vegas in the cheapest way possible and don't really care about spending any time in your room at all, then booking with a third-party website can actually save you a lot of money. I found great deals on booking.com over the years. And here's another tip. If you combine this with Honey, either the Chrome extension or the app, you can get up to 10% back, which you can redeem for gift cards. If you've never used Honey before, I've left a link in the description below where you can sign up and start getting cash back on all kinds of things. So whether you book direct or with a third-party site, I definitely encourage you to price watch. Moving on to the $20 trick. When you check in, you ask if there's any upgrades available and you hand the front desk staff a $20 or a $50 bill when you give them your credit card and ID. You don't need to wedge it or hide it or be sneaky about it because all staff need to disclose tips they're receiving. This is a very common practice. They receive tips all the time, so you don't have to worry about being sneaky. They always want to fill the best rooms because they don't want the best rooms sitting empty. Always, always ask for a free upgrade and it's up to you if you want to provide a tip or not. Visiting on weekdays is going to save you a lot of money. Those are always going to be the lowest rates in Las Vegas at hotels. And you also have a higher chance of getting additional perks or getting a free upgrade as well. To pair with that, visiting in the off season is another great way to save money in Vegas. January, February, April, and September are the most more affordable months to visit Las Vegas. This is another small tip that can help you save a little extra money in Vegas. Don't pay for extra devices. So when you check into your hotel, the resort fee usually includes Wi-Fi, but this is always only for two devices. If you and your travel companion each have a phone, but then maybe you also have a tablet or a laptop, they want to charge you for an extra device to use the Wi-Fi. Don't do this. Most phones nowadays have a hotspot available. So all you need to do is go into your phone settings and turn on the Wi-Fi hotspot hotspot. That way you can connect up to another couple of devices. You can also ask for comps and fee removals at the end of your stay. So at the end of your stay, the night before you check out, go find the casino host, let them know you had a great time, you can't wait to come back, mention that you're checking out tomorrow, and then just ask them politely if any of your playing made you eligible for getting some fees removed or maybe some discounts. A big part of their job is customer satisfaction and retention. You'd be surprised of what they'll remove for you. It really depends how much money you've spent and gambled, but as long as you're polite and reasonable, usually they can get something waived for you. Another way to save money on hotels in Vegas is to arrive early in the morning. This way you can save an entire night's stay in Vegas, but yet still have a full day in the city. And no need to check into the hotel early. Early check-in can cost sometimes as much as $50 to $75 for two to three hours early. Instead, use the bell desk where they will check your bags for free, but it is customary to tip them for this free service. This also works if you have a really late flight. So no need to pay for a late checkout. Again, just leave your bags with the bell desk and then wander around Vegas until you have to leave for your flight. Did you know the Las Vegas airport has sleep rooms? If you've traveled a long distance or have a flight delay, or if you've got a late flight at the end of your Vegas trip, sometimes you're just done with the strip and all the crowds after being there for three or four days, and you just want somewhere to relax before your flight and not have to spend any more money, the airport sleeping rooms are an awesome solution. When you're at the airport, look for the place called Zero Level Fitness. They have a few sleeping rooms available. It costs $35 for two hours, and this also includes access to the fitness center showers and towels. 
Now I have a few tips on saving money on transportation and getting around. My biggest tip is avoid surge pricing. If there's a big event in town, like a concert or a big sports game, book your Uber in advance so that you don't get caught with surge pricing. As long as you book it in advance, you won't get the surge pricing. And sometimes you actually save money by doing this. When you're at the airport, Uber and Lyft is usually always, always going to be cheaper than taking a taxi. I highly recommend taking the rideshare option and you should also compare prices between Uber and Lyft at the same time. If you do want to take a taxi, the rates to the strip hotels are now a flat rate depending on which zone you're in. Rates are posted in the airport, so make sure you know exactly what the price should be before getting into the taxi. So if you do take a taxi, when you get in, some of them will ask you if it's your first time in Vegas. Always say no, it's not your first time, even if it is. Some taxi drivers, not all of them, might try to take advantage of you and tell you the ride is a little more expensive or take a bit of a longer route. So always say it's not your first time in Vegas. You can also take a free bus in Vegas. There's a free bus called the Downtown Loop. It's a free bus that runs from the Strat all the way to the Fremont area and it's got several stops along the way. So you can get on and off at places like Fremont East, the Mob Museum, Circa, Arts District, and the Strat. So definitely look for the Downtown Loop. It's a great new feature that Vegas has and it's totally free. You can also take advantage of the free trams. On the west side of the Strip there are three different trams that you can take which will take you all the way from the Luxor and Mandalay Bay up to Treasure Island and Mirage. Moving on to how to save money on attractions. You should definitely use Groupon. You can find some of the most popular Vegas attractions on Groupon like the High Roller, some of the zip lines, the Dolphin Habitat, and sometimes you can even find deals where you buy a restaurant gift card for $25 or $30 and that gives you $50 to use at the restaurant. Vegas.com is another awesome website where you can save money. They always have random flash sales on shows for like 17 to 35% off. Shows like Tournament of Kings, which is one of the best family shows, or some of the Cirque du Soleil shows, the Blue Man Group, Carrot Top, they always have sales and discounts on shows. So I highly recommend checking out Vegas.com. You can also look into using the Go City Las Vegas Pass. This is a multi-attraction pass that helps you save money by combining admission to several attractions instead of paying for them individually. It's perfect if you want to see at least a few of the really big main attractions in Vegas, or if you really just want to jam pack as much as you possibly can into your trip. You can choose the Explorer Pass, which is a set amount of attractions, or the All-Inclusive Pass, which allows you admission to as many different places as you want in a set time limit. It's especially good if you're traveling as a family with kids. Definitely take advantage of the free attractions in Vegas. You can spend all day long wandering the strip and only spending money on food and drinks and be entertained all day. There's also really inexpensive things you can do, like the Pinball Hall of Fame, and lots of museums also have very low admission prices as well. I also love the Fremont Street experience Experience. It's totally free to walk around. There's always live concerts and music. There's the light show, the people watching, the buskers. It's so much fun and very low cost. Get off the strip is another one of my tips to save money in Las Vegas. There's an abundance of things to do and a lot lower cost restaurants as well. So if you haven't yet, check out my video of 12 places off the strip that you probably haven't heard of and will guarantee you a great time in Vegas. Also look for the hidden discounts. So if you're a Nevada resident, there's often discounts for locals. For instance, at the Lion Habitat Ranch that we visited, locals paid $20 admission instead of 25. And if you're military, a veteran, first responder, a healthcare worker, an educator, student, senior, there's always discounts. And there's also discounts on attractions if you're a hotel guest. So for example, you can save admission on the Eiffel Tower experience if you're staying at the Paris Hotel. Moving on to ways to save on gambling. So first of all, the best way to save money in Las Vegas is to probably not gamble at all. I made a video of 38 things to do in Vegas besides gambling. So I recommend you watch that video next if you want some ideas. But if you do like to gamble, it usually seems to be cheaper in the mornings and also in the Fremont Street and downtown area. We found $5 roulette tables at the El Cortez Casino and you can also find other cheap table games at the Fremont Casinos too. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and check out my other Las Vegas videos. Stay tuned to the channel for more videos like this and if you want more hidden gems, travel tips, and unique things to do when you travel in Vegas and other places, check out my travel blog, likewhereyou'regoing.com. Thanks for watching.